Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iwala, Your Excellency, the Honorable Minister of State of Foreign Affairs, Your Excellency, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and the delegation accompanying the Director General of the World Trade Organization and uh, all the distinguished colleagues here present. Um, it's a wonderful day for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to have one of its own, a former minister uh, of this ministry, uh, who is visiting today, uh, having just been uh, appointed as the Director General of the World Trade Organization. We're absolutely ecstatic at this high honor and very high achievement. The World Trade Organization is one of the premier global institutions that um, regulates uh, trade uh, amongst uh, the countries uh, of the world. And, um, and of course, uh, trade is one of the important elements, components for development. And, um, and we welcome you, Director General. We congratulate you. We're extremely proud of you um, at this uh, a great uh, achievement. Of course, we have all followed over the last few months the process of uh, electing the Director General of WTO. It was an extremely competitive process, and as far as we are concerned, the best person won. It will be it'll be a um, but it'll be a win for not just Nigeria, Africa, the developing countries, but for the global community, for the whole world. There are a lot of challenges um, facing. Uh, the global trading system and WTO in particular and um, there's a saying cometh the hour cometh the man but in this case cometh the hour cometh the woman <laughs> and um, I don't know well figuratively riding on a horse to come and uh, sort out all the global trade issues and challenges uh, we as a government uh, will play our part to ensure um, her success uh, as Director General and the success of the World Trade Organization, an organization we want to see getting back to its preeminent position, making a difference uh, to the world and the peoples of the world. <clears throat> um, so we will do everything to make sure that this organization succeeds. So if she succeeds, the organization succeeds, and the world uh, succeeds. So we'll make all that effort. And of course, um, before uh, assuming this position, uh, she was also the chairperson of the Global uh, Vaccine uh, Alliance, uh, Gavi. And um, so has played and is continuing to play an important role uh, in um, providing access to vaccines for especially developing countries. And um, she has also contributed significantly to the first batch of vaccines that uh, this country received uh, just uh, a couple of weeks uh, ago and uh, is also uh, fully engaged uh, in trying to ensure that uh, we receive uh, in a timely, matter, uh, timely manner uh, even more uh, vaccines uh, for COVID-19 response. Uh, so she really has been uh, a champion uh, in many, many ways. Uh, of course, uh, we also remember her as um, um, a many times Minister of uh, Finance uh, of this country and uh, and also coordinating, coordinating minister uh, of the uh, economy. You all recall 
uh, as uh, the issue of debt is a very topical issue at the moment that once upon a time we had a debt burden uh, around 40 billion, some will say 50 billion, uh, huge sums that were often um, bandied around. But uh, our knight in shining armor on that occasion uh, also got the Paris Club uh, creditors uh, to write off uh, most of our debt at that time, uh, which propelled us um, in a uh, trajectory of, uh, of growth and uh, a growth that also saw under her the rebasing of our economy uh, that also catapulted us to become the largest economy uh, on the continent. And uh, there are a lot of benefits that, uh, that come with that, you know, the credit ratings and so many other things. So the role she has played uh, in the economic transformation of our country has been huge, has been immense. And, um, and of course, um, the role that she played as the managing director of the World Bank. Uh, so she's, um, she's been everywhere and done everything, you know. But uh, here again, there's uh, another mountain that she has also decided to, to take on and, uh, and, uh, and conquer. And uh, so been very, very impressive. We, we owe a great debt <coughs> of gratitude. Uh, to you, uh, Director General, uh, for all that you have done, not just for Nigeria, but for the global community. And, um, and we're absolutely delighted that um, you still have the ambition, you still have the energy and the drive and the commitment to continue doing and to continue giving. And uh, it is uh, a, a, a great uh, blessing for, for the world and for, for Nigeria. So um, we are all there behind you, uh, with you, cheering you on uh, as you add even more uh, to what you are doing uh, for, for mankind. So thank you uh, very, very much for all you have been and all you have done. And um, Thank you in advance for all that you're going to do <laughs> <laughs> and be. <laughs> and we look forward very, very much indeed to, uh, to continuing to, to work with you and uh, to see the best uh, of you. We pray for your success and we'll continue praying for your success while being very confident that you will be a huge uh, success as the Director General of the World Trade Organization. So a very, very warm welcome to your former ministry. And uh, it's a real honor and a real delight for me to receive you during this visit. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. Senior directors and officials of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, my delegation, His Excellency Ambassador Chad Blackman, the Ambassador of Barbados to the UN institutions and W2 in Geneva, Mrs. Wase Musonge, uh, responsible for Africa, the WTO, and uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Adamu, uh, who is the charge in charge of WTO um, for Nigeria in Geneva. <coughs> well, thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for those very kind words. I, I have to start by saying a very sincere and heartfelt thanks to the nation, to His Excellency, Mr. President, the Chief of Staff, to yourself. Uh, you didn't say so, but you worked night and day, along with the Minister of Trade and Industry and Minister of State, uh, both Ministers of State of Foreign Affairs and in Trade and Industry. You worked personally to make sure that this would happen. I remember calling you so many nights. <laughs> <laughs> with one complaint or the other, one demand or the other, and you kept your cool and uh, tried to sort it all out, making calls at all times to different ambassadors. In short, you were absolutely amazing. And I want to, to thank you for your personal, personal attention to this. I, I, I say it, and I will not stop saying it. Without all of you and without the support of ordinary Nigerians, 
especially the young people <laughs> who were on the social media all the time encouraging me. I wouldn't have been able to make it because it was a very tough competition uh, with eight of us at the start uh, um, from eight different countries over a period of more than six months, very grueling. So it needed a lot of encouragement. Of course, I also want to seize the opportunity to thank my family uh, because without them, I would also not have been able to, to make it. So we thank God for everything and for seeing us through this uh, this occasion. Um, uh, they say that um, the WTO General Council, they've made history. So I'm not the one that made history, but they made history by electing the first woman in 73 years. People often talk of WTO in 25 years. But remember before that, there was the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, which morphed, transformed into the WTO 25 years ago. So there's a history of trade, international trade uh, uh, organization of 73 years in which it has only been men who led it. So it's a proud thing that Nigeria has been able to, to make it. But as the Honorable Minister said, it's not just about being a woman or an African. It's about having the competence to lead the organization at this time when it's facing many challenges. So um, I'd like to say that I'm honored, I'm humbled to have been selected because people feel I have what it takes to lead one of the premier multilateral organizations uh, in the world. And it will not be easy. There are many challenges with respect to delivering on uh, ongoing <clears throat> negotiations on fisheries subsidies uh, with respect to trying to get the WTO to contribute more to alleviating the situation of vaccines, therapeutics and diagnostics so that poor countries can have access um, with, the, with respect to issues related to helping to solve inequality, bringing women in trade, micro, medium, and small enterprises to use electronic platforms and our young people to be able to trade more. This will create more jobs. So that's why we're here, to see how can we support uh, Africa and Nigeria. Uh, what more can WTO do to ensure we add value to our products, we create more jobs, because that's what we need for our young people, and we trade more. That's really the, the objective. They say, I'm the DG for the entire membership, but like I said earlier, charity also begins at home. So we want to see what we, we can accomplish here, and I'm very happy uh, to be here. Um, I'm also, as you know, a former Minister of Foreign Affairs. So it's uh, with particular nostalgia that I visit uh, the ministry. I'm very proud of everyone here, and uh, I thank the Honorable Minister, a Minister of State, and the PAMSEC for continuing the tradition of leading this ministry um, uh, very, very proudly. So I, I'll stop there. I want to, um, Honorable Minister, with your permission, ask Ambassador Chad Blackman to, to say a few words. <clears throat> Excuse me, because his Prime Minister, Prime Minister Mia Motley of Barbados, singularly campaigned uh, for my success in the Caribbean. She got the entire CARICOM to come behind me. And as soon as she heard I was coming to Nigeria, she asked His Excellency to join us because she's desirous of strengthening the relationship between Nigeria and Barbados. So I think it's propitious that we are the foreign affairs to give over to you, Your Excellency, to say a few words. Excellency, his colleagues, the people of Nigeria, I bring you greetings on behalf of Prime Minister Mia Motley and Foreign Minister Dr. Jerome Walker. It certainly is an honor to be here to join the Director General and her team on her home voyage uh, to Nigeria. Certainly Barbados is particularly proud with the candidacy that Ni Nigeria has offered to the world. And I can tell you that we are even prouder to be here at this moment with the Director General in our home country because it is a very powerful moment in history where your country and this continent has been able to field its first female director general and first African. And I think that history will forever remember that. Equally, on the bilateral level, as the director general would have indicated, our government is desirous to strengthen our 
ties with Nigeria. And I think there is no better time in history to do so. What COVID-19 has shown over the last year or so is that we're all interconnected and there's a need to strengthen our ties bilaterally in areas of trade, cooperation, understanding the multilateral system even better, culture. You have a very strong cultural brand. Brand Nigeria is very, very strong in terms of your music, your arts. Similarly, Barbados. And I... Thank you. And it is something that needs to be worked even closely. So our government is desirous on strengthening the ties between our two for trade, for an investment. And Barbados is a hub in that part of the world in terms of international transport, an excellent tourism product. And one of the things that we'll be looking to do is to facilitate um, opening our skies between Barbados and Nigeria so that Nigerians can come to Barbados and likewise. And one of the things I can tell you is that you would know Nigerians don't need visas to come to Barbados. So there's a huge potential between our two countries for that inward uh, movement of our people. And likewise, we would also be looking to uh, facilitate the on the reverse. So I think all in all, we are particularly pleased to be here. And as I said, your country ought to be particularly proud in the candidacy and now elected Director General of the WTO. Barbados is very, very happy. And we look forward to working with the Director General in the WTO. And as I said, both bilaterally uh, with Nigeria. And I think when you put that in context of the free trade area now that the continent has, brand Africa has the singular potential to ensure that the goods and services produced on this continent can reverberate throughout the world. And I think, therefore, we are in very good hands with our DG at the helm. So once again, thank you, Minister. Thank you very much. I'll take off from where the Ambassador has just left to say that Nigeria is particularly happy and particularly proud um, with what has happened. In other words, the election of one of our own as the DG of the WTO. And as she has observed herself, Nigeria certainly didn't do it alone. We had all the support that we could get from around the world, particularly from countries such as yours, for which we remain eternally grateful. Um, so much has been said by my colleague, the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, that I believe don't need any repetition, because so much has actually been said, I must say. Uh, but one thing stands out, that Nigeria has every reason to be very, very proud uh, for giving out one of his best to the world. Um, she has made history even within, and uh, she's still making a lot of history outside. And that should make us doubly proud as Nigerians. Um, we have no doubt in our competence. Uh, Nigeria is gradually growing, developing the culture of meritocracy. I believe, like she has herself observed, that she was able to make it not just because she was a Nigerian, not because she was a woman, but because she had all that it took um, to actually get this job. And that, like I said, uh, should send a lot of message to Nigerians that we have every reason to be proud as Nigerians because there is so much that we have in Nigeria to give to the world. We are already giving so much to the world and we believe that we can still do a lot more. So I believe that Nigerians have a responsibility to appreciate their own to appreciate their capacity to deliver to the world. And what we've just seen is just a, a tip, if you like, of, of the iceberg, because there are lots and lots of potentials out here in Nigeria that we can export to the world. And therefore, what we need to do now is to do the best that we can, as has been promised by the Honorable Minister, to give our own all the support that she needs to enable us to succeed in this onerous assignment. We have no doubt in our capacity to deliver. And all we can do is to give her the support. And fortunately, like, as she knows, this government is ready and willing at all times to give her all the support that she will need to make a success of our assignment. Because as it has been said, her success is our success. Uh, her success just as our success is a success for the world and, of course, is also a success for womanhood. 
Um, I believe that very soon we're hopeful, and uh, not talking I'm not necessarily about the Beijing thing, but of course the fact remains that you know uh, the truth must always, must always prevail. That we have women that have the capacity to lead, and she is one big example. Who knows? In the next few years, we may have a woman president in Nigeria. <laughs> so, Madam. Please accept our very, very sincere appreciations for uh, taking time off to visit uh, our ministry, uh, for appreciating the little that we've been able to do or to contribute to your success. Uh, but of course, we take it as part and parcel of our responsibility. Uh, but we also, like I said, we very much appreciate the fact that uh, you are here uh, so that we you may together rejoice over your success. Um, we are also doubly proud that you've chosen as one of your first places to visit or one of the countries to visit I mean, uh, in your outings, Nigeria. Um, that, that is the way it should be because, uh, like you rightly observed, home is home. And therefore, it's, it's good that you've given us this wonderful opportunity uh, to be amongst the first to formally congratulate you. So once, once more, accept our sincere felicitations and please be rest assured that you would always, when you look back, you would always find us behind you. Wish you the very best in your assignment.